few minutes after six o'clock. So we'll call the uh, Monday, February 28th, 2022 meeting of the Hyde Park Select Board to order. Um, everybody, everybody that's here and hopefully we'll see, um, oh, do my little got it thing there. Um, that's here and if people have, have questions, what we're doing is uh, a review of the budget and the preliminary tax rates and then to talk about the articles that folks need to vote on. And um, because one of the issues is a bond, you have to have a public hearing. So we thought we'd uh, use this as the public hearing. So if the town does approve the purchase of the Menashe, 25 acres, um, we will have the authority to go ahead and if it looks like it does make sense with a little more homework to uh, to purchase the property. We should um, at, some, at some point during that open the hearing officially and deal with everything Menashe then close the hearing for the record so it looks like we dealt with it as a hearing. Okay. And then uh, move on to other things. So whether you do that first or second, just when you get ready to do it, I would say have a motion to open the hearing. Okay, all right. Why don't we go ahead and do the, the budget review and the preliminary tax rate and, and those things first. Hey, Roly, how are you? Yeah, I didn't know if there, did you ask for a public comment yet? I don't think. Any, oh, well, right, okay. No, you're right. Is there any public comment? I figure if folks that are here probably wanna want to jump in about certain articles but does and does anyone have anything they'd like to add to that all right we're good okay so last time we um got to the budget and we just uh i just walked through the flyer that was sent out to everybody um highlighting the the end of the end of the budget process, which is what's the tax rate increase, which is four point nine seven. Uh, the overall sure. expense expense Ron, budget. Yeah, you know that one little that one little pager thing yeah. is the front of. How about if you share that so folks? Don't oh, the uh, yeah, I can do the tax rate yeah, reduction sheet. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that sort of shows you. Here's the here's where changes are. Yes. See that? That's, that's a good technology thing. You can, okay, wait, I don't need to print out that paper again. <laughs> oh, here it is. Just get it on a good size. Okay, so I can, I'll share that screen as I talk so we can go through that. Okay. So this is in the town report and uh, follows the budget. If you, anybody has the town report, not sure what page it is, but it's I'm just going to find it. Yeah. Page fifteen, maybe, or somewhere in there. So part of the tax rate projection is everything from the budget to the grand list to changes. Um, we're projecting a two point grand list increase, which is a little, a little bit higher than the past five to ten years when we've seen zero to one. 1.2, something like that. Last year was 1.65, I think. And uh, we did see a bunch of housing get started in the last couple of years where we got double digit housing units um, for the first time and probably since 2008, 2009. Uh, so that is a projection or an estimate and that does impact the tax rate when it's set for July 1st. So the overall, um, tax rate change is at the bottom at 4.97 or 86 cents, 0.80, uh, which is about $41 for every $100,000 of property assessment value. Uh, there's no special funding articles, so there's no additional ads that we see for the 23 budget. Um, Manash, Article five may increase that for 24, FY24, which is next year. Um, revenue changes, we had a correction in um, $15,000 that is not available to reduce the tax rate that goes into a reserve fund for reappraisal. So that needed to get out of the general fund calculation 
and um, be at negative 15 for this year and won't go back. So this is a one-time adjustment. The other increases, we had 4% uh, in the budget for staff. Uh, those wage increases are effective uh, if the board so approves on July 1st. Um, we also had a series of changes in the highway budget due to a union contract change. So that increased some of those um, wages. The first line that you see on this expense summary is 12,300. That's for the administrative staff. The highway changes are down about halfway at 26,500. And those are increases over the current budget that we're projecting for July 1st. Uh, decreasing the Lister salary is offset by an increase in the town assessor uh, contract. So as that money was removed, because of lack of listers, uh, it had to be shifted over to a contract uh, last May 21. And we're projecting um, no increase in the cost. It's just moving the money around. Uh, let's see, uh, culvert purchases, that's another one that goes up by 35,000, but then we don't crush gravel. So that goes to zero and you have this up and down uh, flow between those two line items each year. One goes in, one goes out, and they pretty close to zero, maybe a couple thousand dollars more sometimes due to inflation. Uh, some of the biggest changes are related to the paving. We have a paving loan for Center Road that we have to pay for, which is the increase uh, 143,000. And to get there and try to accommodate that, the board de decreased the capital fund um, which is the last line there, you'll see 30,000 reduced to make room for some of that. Uh, they also reduced by 65,000 the annual paving line. And we were doing pretty good on that on an annual basis, trying to get to $300,000 a year. Um, after the center road loan is paid, that uh, $65,000 should go back into paving so we can get back on track with the annual needs there. Library staff increased by 24,500. That's a combination of more hours and some wage increases to try to cover the three floors. Uh, library trustees recommend that increase because of well, part of it's due to finishing the basement and they need coverage down there for, uh, I think it's meeting and room and maybe reading room down there. Haven't seen it yet myself. Uh, and then they have the upper floor and main floor. So those, um, really additions of service, if you want to look at it that way, where there'll be more staff there to help people. Uh, the last one is, I've been jumping around a little bit, but the police patrol budget is 13,000, which is the last year of a 3% increase, which uh, Sheriff Marcoux has done successfully for the towns that are patrol towns with us and Johnson and, and Wolcott. And I think this is the last year where he committed to that 3% increase. I don't know what he's projecting for budgets when we see him in October, this, this later this fall. And I think that's it. Um, I don't have anything else unless somebody has some questions. Most of the special appropriations for outside agencies were level funded. I think they all were actually level funded and a lot of the town departments and services were either 3% or so or less. Uh, so we did see increases in highway and library, but um, overall, uh, we were able to get it down below the 5% expense increase. Ideally, the board's shooting for 3%, three, 3% um, maybe 35 uh, That 3.5% increase in expense can often be offset by a grand list increase of 2%. So when you do the sort of when you do the math of five or 6% increase in expense and only a 2% increase in the grand list, you're gonna have a tax rate increase. And that's what you ended up with this year at 4.97. That's the spiel on that one page. And of course we have the other pages or any specific questions if anybody has any, any anything they'd like to know more about. I think it, uh, thinking two things and part of the issue for the library and the coverage as is um, well and Kim is is found in getting help with county votes and all these sorts of things is 
there are a lot of volunteers through COVID have, um, we're not, we're not volunteering. And um, a, a lot of, a lot of the people that are volunteer are, uh, are we older people. And uh, they take a couple of years off and decide, you know what, I probably really don't need to volunteer as much anymore. So where the library had been able to count, and I know a lot of other organizations as well, um, had been able to use volunteers to do, you know, to do coverage. It's just, uh, they just aren't there anymore. So the, the increase was the two part-time people that they had increasing their hours so that they have, uh, so that you have at least two people in the library every time, um, which is you, you see. And the other with the, with the growth in the, in the grand list, and I just sort of throw this out for everybody to, you know, to ponder, but um, and the whole issue with the, with the listers and keeping a town's grand list um, up to date, uh, the past two years have been such chaos in the in the housing market and what properties have sold for that I can't believe that you know it, it only takes three crazy property sales in Hyde Park to put us way out of whack. So it looks as though our you know our our appraisal levels are are all messed up, and I'm sure the entire state's going to be looking at this. In a community like Stowe, it's got to be crazy. Um, I, a house in the village last week sold for, I think, $640,000. You go, right. Um, so, so a lot of numbers are going to be strange, and I don't know, uh, that's going to have some ramifications for budgets down the line. I'm not sure how, if nothing else, just needing to do reappraisals sooner than we usually think that we're going to have to do them, but... Um, <laughs> Something, something's going to be different. I'm still, I guess I, I brought that up because I'm still marveling at the sale of that property for that amount of money. It's like, whoo, okay. Anybody have any questions about Ron's, the sort of, the sort of summary page of the budget or are there specific issues that folks are interested in. It's all it's pretty, pretty quiet. Okay, how about the uh, the, the various articles and, and if anybody's listening um, has questions or please feel this is this this is the time to this is the time to ask them. You say, Ron, just shall we just go through the articles one at a time? I can read them quickly and, and people can stop me you know, after each one to see if there's any comments so we can walk through it. Sure, does that work for everybody? Okay. You, you, you don't have to read them in detail. No, 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 no. I just give a summary of what they are and people can say, let's talk about it. Uh, uh, art, I'll just skip ahead. Article five, we need to go into a public hearing after we get through the other others. Right. So article one is downstairs tomorrow at uh, Kim's running the show tomorrow for the in-person voting with mask required and people going in will be staggered a little bit I think I'm not sure how many she's letting in at one time uh, the early voting has been going on with mail-in ballots so those that helps reduce the crowd tomorrow uh, lower level of the town office uh, building uh, number two is the um, $175,000 borrowing question for the North Hyde Park truck. They're um, hoping to trade in a couple or sell two and buy one new one and uh, overall reduce the fleet by one truck, which is um, actually discussed with the fire department for a couple of years now, I think, about how to 
how to maybe reduce the truck. So they came up this uh, proposal. Just as a reminder, North Hyde Park Fire Department is an incorporated private nonprofit. Uh, the towns of Eden and Hyde Park support that um, department 50% each operating as well as capital. Uh, if this loan is approved, it's funded uh, through the capital reserve that the, both towns have for fire equipment. And the basically the towns hold title to the vehicle for the length of the loan. And we have insurance on it. Or we require them to have insurance on it and they provide us a certificate of insurance. We hold the note for the five years at the end of five years, the towns donate that equipment to the department, and we don't have any more control over it after the loan is paid. So any questions on Article 2? Three is the listers. Uh, this is a, a sort of state-required uh, request to, to the voters to eliminate the office of lister. Due to the lack of a quorum on the board, uh, if there's no quorum of the board, then the select board is forced to do, which they um, did last year in May, hire an outside professional town assessor. Uh, Nemric was uh, hired for that, and they've continued to perform those duties. They basically perform, perform all the duties that the listers were required to perform. Uh, the money was in the budget from prior contracts plus the lister salary. So we're not projecting any uh, budget increase because of that um, in the 23 budget. Anything on article three? Yeah, let me, I just, I just sort of fill in because obviously some, yep. um, some people had concerns about it and it's, <laughs> uh, and sort of the history really back in the I guess it was the late 90s when Act 60 was passed and the state went to a statewide property tax. Um, the state suddenly became very interested in concerns about towns keeping their, their grand list up to date, which, uh, you know, a few minutes ago when I was talking about these, you know, these crazy property prices, that's, um, the state's going to have some real, you know, some real interest in that because yeah, the, the grand list of the state is jumping all over the place right now. And that's obviously what the statewide property tax is based on. So, so you, and the job of listers has, as many things has, is a very complex, demanding, uh, uh, personal opinion, tedious job. It's the kind of job that I don't, I don't do well at all. Um, it's very detailed, it's very demanding, it's got a lot of math, it has a lot of complex formulas. Every time the state makes a change, the, the listers have to be aware of that change and keep it up to date. We haven't, uh, Julia, who you see part of the dedication of, of this town report to, was our, uh, was our main person and she worked part time uh, and she really, uh, she really became a professional in that area. And the other folks that, that were listers stayed listers because she was there and she kept saying, you have to stay, you have to stay. So people stayed. Um, when she and her husband sold their home and left and we, we all knew this was coming, the uh, two of the then listers said, okay, that's it, we're done. We have been, I have talked to several people um, about uh, possibly becoming listers. And uh, they've looked at it. Obviously, if you look at the job, you think about people that that be building real estate, uh, you know, those, those sorts of backgrounds are gonna be, uh, come in with a lot of knowledge about the, the sorts of things that listers deal with. And, um, I have been resoundingly turned down by everyone that we've talked to just in terms of it's a really complex job. It requires hours and hours of training. Um, it requires hours of work. And uh, even, at, even at $20 an hour, people are like, I just, I'm, I'm not gonna, we're not interested in doing it. Um, several people have said, well, if, if the town, if, uh, if the town doesn't, doesn't 
agree to to um, to eliminate the office of listers what's going to happen and actually absolutely nothing's going to happen because the town has to comply with state law so we have to keep doing what we're doing um, it just seemed since this is a position that we had been unable to fill we can't get anybody to take it and in terms of being transparent it would be to say here's here's what's happening so um, why keep running the empty slots as I've said, if there are people out there who, who want to wage a write-in campaign and do all the training or somebody wants to be appointed as listers, we select board would be happy to have to have folks fill those positions. Um, but, but it just, um, and, and again, this is, this is not unique to Hyde Park at all. We had, I'd, uh, about a year and a half ago, as we could see this issue coming, it had just casual conversations with a couple of the surrounding communities and going, well, you know, maybe if we, if we pooled our financial resources, we could hire one appraiser who could, who could cover two or three towns because for a town the size of Hyde Park, it's obviously near, or Johnson or, or Walcott, it's, it's not a full-time job. So, We've, we've sort of batted that idea around and even depending on what happens with this article one way or the other, I think this coming year I'll probably pursue it um, just to see if towns are, if towns are interested. It would, be, um, it would be nice to have someone that just paid attention to a few towns as opposed to a, you know, a large organization like Nimerick that I'm sure does a perfectly adequate job. But, um, but again, trying to keep things a little closer to home would be I think would be ideal. Whether that's possible or not, I have no idea. Roly, Brian, I don't know if Chastity's there. Anybody got? Yeah, like you said, we've uh, we've tried. We put it on front porch forum and advertised for the uh, listers, and and uh, nobody's responded. And uh, and like Susan said, it's. Uh, tedious job with uh, a lot of training that goes along with it. And unfortunately, it made people shy away from it. I'm here too. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. I was, was going to pretty much say exactly what Brian did. You know, it's hard <laughs> to find hard to find people to do anything in the communities, unfortunately, and especially when it does require some training, you know, that, like you said, Brian, that does tend to scare people a little bit more. So I feel it's a better choice to, to take it elsewhere anyway. Um, and then it kind of helps us from not having to try to find people every year or every two years or whenever their term is up as we've done in the past. Well, and, and once somebody gets trained, you like, Ooh, you know, but we'll, again, we'll, we'll see what happens. We, we need to keep the town in compliance with state law. So we've got to keep this up to, um, up to, up to date. Um, what, we, what we do find though, is um, we do now have a tree warden and actually an excellent person. I can't believe I haven't thought of this person, but, uh, but uh, David Palumbo has agreed. Again, but, you know, as we put these things out on front porch forum, periodically and and uh, you get and folks folks do respond so he was interested and and um so we we now officially have a tree warden again which All which right. sounds like a well, sounds like a little thing but it again it's one of those we were lucky the person that had it before had a lot of background in uh and uh and we really got some good policies and it and uh, again, we assured David it's one of those things you can sort of do as little or as much as, as you have time and its interest, but it is one of those things that really can help too with long-term planning and what you want your town to look like. And it helps identify the trees that need to come down before they fall down in the road or on, the, on, on lines in people's houses. So, so we, got a, we got a good volunteer there. Okay, um, article four. Okay, so article four, we've done this before for various purposes. This is uh, similar to that, which is using some of the general fund on the fund balance to move to reserve for other purposes, which is the 
garage repairs, which are ongoing or in process and equipment purchases and road, road, roadway projects. And part of the reserve fund is, is intended to be multi-purpose. So we sometimes will have a 10% grant, grant match or we'll have an emergency or a piece of equipment might come along that um, uh, we need to buy that's not too big, but it's not in the budget, or maybe there's a big repair all of a sudden that has to happen. So, I mean, there's all sorts of things that the reserve fund can be used for that make the operation of the department better um, in the sense that we can plan on projects and not have to keep uh, putting the highway budget up and down uh, by those larger dollar amounts. So uh, each department generally has a pretty pretty up-to-date capital plan. It's not one of the official capital budgets that uh, the state law en envisions, uh, where you have a public hearing and there's a vote and all that stuff. Um, but there are projections, for example, for trucks and other things that uh, come up on a regular cycle that normally get funded by the reserve. This is the 75,000 is more for the ongoing expenses of the highway department uh, for that major garage repair, which we hope to get some roofing done uh, and roadway projects that might require some grants, uh, grant match money. So as those things come up, um, without the 75,000, uh, we actually do, we actually have um, some, some need to dip into the operating budget sometimes, which isn't ideal. Um, so that, that prevents that from happening as well. So that's what the 75,000 does. It's multi-purpose um, projects that are ongoing plus upcoming projects. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll skip five and do that one at the end about article six. Yeah, article six just... is the expense budget covered by property taxes. So when voters are at the polls, they'll be voting the $2.9 million budget, which is offset by the 425,000 of non-property tax revenue. And then the tax rate will be set on the $2.475 million number. And that money, uh, we won't know exactly the impact on the tax rate, but that if that 2.475,300 is approved, that's the number that goes into the tax rate calculation in, at the end of June. Uh, if the budget's not approved, then I think the select board generally would, not generally, but the select board would go back to the voters with a revised budget at some point um, before June. That's how that would work. Okay, and um, article seven. Seven is the same uh, as prior years with four quarterly payments. And we do allow the postmark if it's dated uh, on or before the due date. And I think there's no percentage changes. The 8% is the same. Um, if you look at other towns votes on this question, sometimes you'll see 4%, 0%, 7%. 8% is the maximum that can be charged for not making the May payment, which is the last quarterly payment. If you don't make the other installments, there's the interest charge at uh, one percent for the first three months, and then it increases to one and a half after the third month of being late. So again, that's no no changes. The dates have changed because of the calendar, but uh, nothing else has changed in the article. We, we have a, and again, I guess just for the record, so folks know and the folks that are listening is um, Kim does and, and over the years has uh, does an excellent job with people and their taxes. And we have one of the lowest delinquent tax things in, uh, of any of anybody around us people sort of look at it and go you must be wrong and it's not Kim is is uh, excellent at working with people um, and helping them come up with a plan so that they're paying their taxes and they aren't having to pay a lot of penalties um, she's just she is uh, 
uh, we could, I don't know, maybe, maybe we get some more money. We should rent her out to town so she can teach other towns how to, how to do it. But Kim does a, a super job at this as she does. She does a terrific job with, uh, with elections and voting and, and um, all that stuff and making it, making it easy for, for folks to, to participate. That is the last paragraph all about uh, tomorrow. <laughs> Make sure everybody can get to the uh, the polls, and I just want to pull that up again, which is the top of the article, uh, eight thirty in the morning tomorrow until seven p.m. at three forty-four Vermont Route Fifteen West. And I think she must have called all the select board members already about counting ballots after. Or that kind of oh, yes. stuff. Oh, no. oh, yeah, don't worry. She got That's another thing there. that Kim will do is make sure she has the, the people there to help her close up the, yep. close yep. Up the election. Does. And we've, we've uh, already processed the 75 that she already had that were early absentee ballots. That's all done. Excellent. So. All right. Public hearing time, I think. Well, that's right. Or pause a minute. Anybody have any questions? Up there, Sterling, you got any questions? Got any comments? Hi. No, um, I don't have any. Uh, Jan, do you have any? No, none at all. OK. Super. Then I guess what we'll do is, is um, this here we go for the uh, Call to order. Let me see what time it is here. It, uh, well, let's round it up to 640. How's that? <laughs> um, call to order a public hearing for the bond authorization on, uh, it's in Article 5 for the 25 acres um, purchase from Howard Panache. Um, and, and again, we have this is, we just thought that we'd we get the authority to bond. So if voters give us, decide that they wanna purchase this property, then we don't have to call a special meeting after and do this sort of thing. If the, um, if the article doesn't pass, then we obviously don't have to borrow any money to buy the property. So um, I, th I think maybe just for some, uh, for some background, um, if folks know, Ron's got the map up, but where it is really is, is, uh, it's a, a, which, which for me, several years ago, if someone said it's, a, it's across the road from our current gravel pit would not have been particularly <laughs> helpful to me. Um, but, and I am now very familiar with the gravel pit, but, um, if I'll go back and, and, uh, we'll all date ourselves and it's the, uh, John and Judy Clark's farm and all up through that area. And it is um, on, and, um, on one side of the road, as you're going down the road on the right side, there's our gravel pit. There are also the ball fields uh, that are used. And this would be 25 acres on the other side of the road. If you look at a, uh, if you look at a map of the area, you'll see a lot of the area around there has been conserved. And the Clarks did a lot of work when they, when they were selling their property at conserving the, uh, at conserving the land. The current Act 250 permit says that that land has to stay in agricultural use until 2035. And, and part of that is a, uh, someone that, that was talking with us last Monday is that was put in because this was uh, as, as Howard and his other gravel pit as part of um, getting permission to do that gravel. This was land that was put aside that would stay in agricultural use as a, as a balance for a gravel pit. Uh, what you're looking at here really is uh, two important natural resources, gravel and uh, in high quality agricultural land. So, so uh, Howard, Howard is at an age where he's decided he's starting to, he's starting to sell off a, a variety of, of things. Um, he came to the town and has and had offered this and has offered this to the town. Uh, and what is certainly a, uh, a reasonable uh, is, a, is a fair price. 
we um, we talked about it and we thought that it was an excellent opportunity for the town um, to, to make an investment in this piece of property. Uh, no decisions gonna be made, can be made to change anything for a number of years. So the town has plenty of time to put together a really um, a comprehensive diverse group of folks in the community. Um, I'm sure the Regional Planning Commission would help us, but to come up with a variety of options of what would be a good use of this property. And I, I, have, I have certainly heard there are a lot of diverse opinions about this piece of property in town. And, and we knew that there were, and that's why we thought, well, um, because the town is in good financial shape, um, we can afford to, to do a bond and buy this property we then as a community can decide what's going to happen with this property. Uh, if we choose not to buy the property, I have no doubts whatsoever that Howard is gonna sell it and then we will have very little, very limited input as to what happens to the property. And worst comes to worst down the line, we could always turn around and resell the property. So we just saw it as, a, uh, as an opportunity for the community to be uh, very involved and we have the time to be involved with a, uh, with a prime piece of property in, in Hyde Park. Our current gravel pit is slowly but surely eating away at the ball fields. So eventually the ball fields will, will, uh, will disappear as, as, as the town uses, uses the gravel. Uh, and I'm, I'm not quite sure where there are other big pieces of property in Hyde Park that you could locate a recreational field. But, but again, I think um, the, we, we saw it as an, as an interesting opportunity for the town. It came, um, it came later in the year, so we didn't have, we thought, well, we'll just, uh, we'll take it to the folks and we'll, we'll put it on the ballot and we'll talk about it and we'll see what happens. And anybody else? Roly, Brian, Chastity, got any thoughts about it? No, the only thing, the only thing I got to add is you keep saying gravel. Don't forget the road sand. That's that's a big thing. Yep. You know. Yep, that's true. I mean, there's a lot of towns, Underhill, Jericho, Essex Junction, and all them towns are hauling it all the way from Johnson. I mean, it's going to be a big thing down the road 10 years. Natal's has only got like, I think I've heard, I'm not quoting this, but I've heard Natal's has only got like 15 years left in theirs. Yep. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm old enough to remember when we bought our current gravel pit and it seemed like that would be that would be enough for centuries, and and we still we still have lots. Again, there isn't there isn't any 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 rush on it. But um, again, your select board just sees this as an opportunity for the town to be able to purchase something and and develop a plan for it. Also, if that's going to be a uh, <clears throat> transitional spot for the ball fields, it's close enough. It's a, it's a, it's literally like I said across the street. And a lot of the buildings there and stuff like that could be moved to that location um, if it's with what the town wants to uh, to continue it as a ball field up there too. When we have to go into where the current ball field is to access our resources. Yeah, I, 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 I think if the town does decide, if the voters decide that we should buy it. I expect what we'll end up with is looking at what we currently what we currently own in this new addition, and coming up with a really comprehensive plan. Um, I, I, I'm sure you you get a diverse group of people together. I bet there are a lot of very creative ideas uh, about what we can do with that large amount of property over time, and come up with a plan that works for the next you know, 40 years as to, as to what the community can, can use that property for and benefit, benefit from. You don't, we don't, you don't very often as a, as a town get a chance to, you know, to look that far ahead, the day-to-day -day stuff tends to, it's, it's just like our, 
well, it's just like my private life. <laughs> Maybe other people are good at planning way far ahead, you know, but we get, we all get, we all get caught up in the day-to-day, year-to-year thing. So to, to have an opportunity to do some really large comprehensive planning and, and, uh, in in dreaming and hoping about, about a future in Hyde Park, I think is a really exciting opportunity. But we'll find it, we'll know tomorrow night whether the public thinks it is or not. Anybody on got any questions or you want any more information? Okay, what, what, uh, so Ron, if, if everybody's so quiet now, if you would Zoom, if you manage to lock everybody out so it's impossible for people to participate. Oop, now we lost Ron. Ron, you're muted. Yeah, so um, <laughs> now that we've gone through the presentation, if somebody wants to jump in, I think I just unclick something so people can ask questions, whatever, at this point. We're a little gun shy from the last meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 a little bit, yeah. So I think everybody can now unmute themselves if they would like to speak. And if you have any other questions too, we're not, we're talking about this property, but happy to answer any other questions if you thought of something. Just quick questions on that. Uh, do we know who uses that property now or, or what the use of that property is? That's not where the hemp is, right? No, but I think high mowing seeds is using it. Yeah. So is there a lease or anything on the property now that could pursue? I'm, um, we, we thought it might be being a little pushy to start asking questions that too many questions before we got into it. But if we decide to buy it, um, I am sure that we would pursue that lease. And again, it's, it, it really needs to until 35 uh, stay under agricultural um, use. So um, I would be surprised if high mowing wasn't interested in continuing to use it. Just yeah, a question throwing it out there. ARPA is closed out, right, Ron? We can't, you can't add to the ARPA fund, so it probably couldn't be used for potential ARPA fund? No, yeah, this, the, the U.S. Treasury relie relieved a lot of the right. constraints yeah. in the uh, in January on what towns can do. So if you're, uh, recreation is a, is a new kind of uh, bigger um, opportunity for municipalities because they, they did tie that into something that the public needs during uh, pandemic situations, they need to get outside. So they added a whole a lot of places they are doing a lot of recreation projects that have been sitting on the shelf or things that they could do that they never had before. Um, as far as the lease goes, the only I asked uh, Howard that question. And I think it was, um, how do I say this? So uh, without object, use without objection, <laughs> which, which, a lot of which, farming which, leases. which means I don't think there's a lease, but there's no objection to them doing whatever they ha happen to be doing they there right do now. Right. Uh, whether they get squatter rights in 15 years, that's for the attorneys to figure out, but. <laughs> so and, yeah, there's, and, there's opportunity under ARPA, I believe, and that's something that we could look at if the vote's uh, positive, obviously. Right, right. You just, um, yeah, we, sort of, we, we figure, out, figure out the public interest in it and um, then pursue a variety of options. I guess that's it. Okay, with none, I close the public hearing on the on the bond authorization. Uh, Six fifty. Okay. How about some other business?
I'm just wondering when we're going to discuss the issue around the um, uh, employees uh, working on Christmas Day. When will that be discussed? That was left to the town attorney's schedule this week. So she just got back from a 10 day vacation this today. So she hasn't called me today, but that's on her list of things to do. And then we'll set a date with the union. Okay. Okay, and Ron Chastity, do you have, um, we're talking about job descriptions and things, are we doing, are we doing any of that tonight? Yeah, I think we're pretty close. Um, we had um, a possibility of advertising, re-advertising, I think is where Chastity and I kind of left it. Um, the job description that we had, um, I think we just finished that yesterday, so I can send it out to everybody uh, tonight. And then the, you can look at the original finance director from 2019. Uh, and I'll send you the draft ad, which you know, basically is we don't know what we're going to get kind of ad. It's uh, $21 to $28, 35 to 40 hours a week, uh, payroll, accounts payable, general ledger type work to keep things moving, uh, working closely with Kim and Krista on payroll, trying to get... Um, a couple hours a week out of Krista, the front office, do a couple things on the processing of paper, which will help uh, overall, with whether or not we hire somebody new or not, it still would help to have some of the things like payroll timesheets or invoices opened and sent to the right place. And then um, Kim and I started talking today about the specifics of that. So uh, Chastity and I and Kim probably will need a conversation about that, more the specifics of what we're thinking. But the, the concept is to work closely with the front office, advertise. Uh, ideally, we would do that to put it in the, um, um, the queue at the newspaper by tomorrow. So I don't know if you want to do that during the meeting or if I'll just email you and then people can email me with any um, questions tomorrow morning and then we can get it to the newspaper by noon. <laughs> It's a little, a little accelerated, but some of the things that we're doing are ongoing uh, payroll and things are keep rolling along without anybody in the office that had been doing that. So I don't know where Ch Chastity is here, so I, she can fill any blanks, but that's, that's a quick overview. Yep, you're muted, Chastity. She, she snuck away and was putting a log on the fire. <laughs> See her. Yeah. There she is. Well, I went, Ron, you had me blocked. Did you think I was the bad person from last okay. week? <laughs> no, no, no. I think you're, I think you're all set. That's star six thing too, right? <laughs> Oh, is yeah, that that's what, what people I have to do? Okay, right. All right. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, and it kept telling me, I'm sorry, the host has you muted. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, um, Ron and I, or Ron did most of the work this weekend, but we worked very diligently this weekend on revamping that job description, and it is very detailed and really good. I think easier would be Ron for you to email it to him because it is so lengthy and to have them read it however yeah. I would love for you I, I would love for you guys to read it tonight and then or in the morning so we can get it in the paper tomorrow sure. I think I don't think we should let another week go by without getting it advertised um so that's my thought you know and um you're welcome you know we can email and chat about it but um I'm really I'm really happy with the job description. I think that based on Deborah's thoughts um, that she gave us, or yeah, her opinions and thoughts about things that should be kind of revamped and reworded, 
and we took all that into consideration as well as some of Ron's thoughts. Um, and I think it's a great, a great job description. Um, so I don't know if you guys have any questions um, on that, but if you could find the time to look at it, that would be awesome. <laughs> Just so we can get it advertised this week. Yeah, I, I, I think one of the things we sort of started talking about it before and I, Ron said it to me last night, I looked at it and I went, okay, is, is um, we, Ron knew, I sort of threw Ron um, that that we um, that we needed. We knew we needed to make some changes, but sometimes you don't know what you don't know. Okay, Ron, are people being able to get in? Yeah, it should be. I mean, oh, he's wanting to talk or something. Okay, or does he need to do star? Do people know it's star six? Um, yeah. I had to push star six to unmute. You know, all my things say anybody can unmute that wants to talk. So. Yeah, but do they know it, it's star six, not just unmute? Well, Brian, if Brian's on video, it should be on his oh. screen. Right. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm on my phone, so I had to do star six. Ah, okay. Okay. Um, you know, sometimes you don't, you know, you need to do something different, but you don't know what you don't know. So, and, and I think one of the, and, and Chastity, now that you've spent some time and you're, you know, anybody coming onto a board, it takes a while and you get comfortable with it, but you have a background in so much of this stuff um, and being comfortable that between you and Deborah and Ron, we've, we certainly figured out what we don't know and we're figuring out what we do need. So they're coming, you know, sort of, I think a variety of changes will be coming. And the first run we took at that job description was kind of piled it all in and we think this is what we want, this is what we need. And it wasn't, it obviously wasn't correct. <laughs> Just let it go at that, it was an effort. But so I, I think I, I, a big thing that Deborah has brought to us, but you jumping into chastity has been, okay, Now now we can, um, and, and again, looking at this job description and looking at some changes and some going forward, some changes we can make. Um, I think it'll really streamline and, and, and get us into how we pay bills and, you know, and, and everything else. It's like everybody, I even find it at home. Nobody, nobody wants to check in the mail anymore. You know, they want everything done electronically and that changes how you, how you keep track of things and everything else. So. I sent the um, I sent the job description proposed for finance and administrative person um, the job ad the advertisement that will go in and the job description for finance director that Deborah was hired under so people should have those in their inbox. Oh, that's the wrong one. Okay. I'm going through what I just sent to you. There's the ad. You just have to get the you know, we a few times, John. So <laughs> I have to get the new job description out. Hold on. Right. Let's go share. Oh. I'll send the word version out and then I'll send a PDF out. Send you both in case you have edits. Okay. Roland, can you let Brian know that we fixed the his connection? He's he signed off to because he was getting uh, blocked, I think. But then he we just undid it. Okay, I'll call him. So, 
So then I'll ask again, see if, have, so are other folks that are on here, have they been trying to get in and they can't get in? Yeah, it, it was variable because we had uh, opened the meeting with uh, people just coming in like last right. time. So I sent it right. to the waiting room and then we had people that were muted and unmuted and I muted everybody so that I could get people um, just that were talking and then I forgot to unmute or give permission. It's actually permission to unmute. So everybody has permission to unmute now. And, but to unmute in this system, you gotta do star six. If you're on the phone, it's star six. And if you're online, you look for the three dots or upper right corner of your screen. Okay. Depends on what, what you're using. Okay. <laughs> I figure, now Matt, Matt figured out how to get in. I'm just seeing your people and they haven't said anything. I'm going, okay. <laughs> I know how easily I, um, I have a very low threshold frustration point with technology. Yeah. Uh, but Dave, Dave, Dave got me and I about to say, I was going, okay, I'm unplugging and leaving now. I'm done. <laughs> I'm out of here. I know, yeah. that's right. <laughs> that's I can't make this thing work. about the hybrid. You can choose what you want to do. Okay, so so you've okay, you've you've sent us you sent us the, the board what we need we can look at and if folks would um, if you get a chance if you can tonight or tomorrow morning and get feedback to to Ron and Chastity we'll uh, um, so that we can get the ad in the paper to get see what see what we see what we get did did you check with any of the folks that applied before um, actually, I went back through their resumes and um, the job is different enough that I think we're going to get a okay. different batch of people. Different batch of people. Okay. I think so. They were, they were looking for certain things and just right. we're a little more this specific different. this time around as well. You know, we're a little more specific in what we're asking for. Yeah. So yeah. that should help. Okay. Yeah, I think that the specifics will help hopefully bring in a different group you know yep okay or attract i shouldn't say that attract different people you know that are well, more it's a different that it, type. yeah yeah it's a it's a different job well again we've yeah. we've learned a lot in three or four months and yeah, for sure okay so now i'll send the um i'll just send the same thing but it's a pdf version so that if you like the PDF version, you can use that. Okay. Okay. So, so Roly, work for you. Look at it and get feedback tomorrow. And. Yes. What's the deadline for this paper, Ron? Do you know? Is it like by noon or something? Tomorrow yeah, it's, or? it's usually by noon or one or something tomorrow for Thursday's paper. So okay. that I they want to be able to put it in their system and send me a proof. Um, so that's the reason for that. They they have to get they have to get it to their printer at some point on Tuesdays. I sure. think. Yeah. Okay. Um. Anything else? No. I don't think so. I think we're all good. Okay. It seems strange not to do anything on town meeting day. Well, not to do anything. <laughs> Go down at seven o'clock and count ballots, right? <laughs> I see Diane just joined us. We'll see, Diane, if you have any questions, because we're about we're about done here. Whoops. Oh, I just, uh, I'm sorry. I had another meeting. I just finished coming. I was just trying to yep. listen to see. Um, well, I guess my biggest question is I'm not sure how to vote on this issue. And I was, I probably missed your information about the purchase of the land. And um, I'm sure there's been a lot of discussion on that. And I probably could listen to the, to the recording and maybe oh. get some answers that way. 
Well, we can do that or we'll, we'll, uh, we can run through it again. I've, I've gotten, um, I've spent a lot of time running through this issue the past week and a half. So, okay. um, um, and well, it's really, do you, yeah. Yeah. Do you, have, do you have specific questions? Because we, we really didn't have a lot of discussion on it because there wasn't many people that asked questions. So do you have specific questions you'd like, like us to try to answer for you? Well, I'm just, I, I guess I'm just not quite sure. I, I read the proposal and I know that it's adjoining the sand pits and whatever that Hyde Park uses for the town and that the ball fields um, are close to the sand pits. And I, I'm assuming that the um, reason for the pur purchase um, would be to move the ball fields in the future. And if that's how I understand the information correctly. And I guess if that's the reason to purchase this as an insurance card for future growth, that's, that's you know, certainly something that's um, good. Although we, I guess there's some moratorium on when it can actually start being used. Um, but if it's going to just be an expansion of the sand pit, apparently that's quite fertile land. And I would be concerned that we would be using that type of land for those, those um, purposes. Right, I think um, uh, Diane, you have, an, uh, you have encapsulated perfectly what the issues are. And when the town got the offer, when uh, when Howard came to the town and said, you know, he's uh, he's he's selling a variety of things, and he was selling this piece of property, and would the town be interested? And um, you're right, the current Act 250 permit is it needs to uh, to sort of stay in agricultural use. You can't do anything until 2035. What we see it is an opportunity for the town to purchase a, a, a very important piece of property. Uh, and because there's no rush on it, then to put together a, a group of, of, uh, of High Park residents that, that are um, uh, very diverse and to work with, again, I would expect the, the Regional Planning Commission would, would help us, but to come up with a, uh, a comprehensive plan for, and I, I expect if you look at that, then you cross over to our current, the existing, the ball fields and the gravel pit, all the stuff that we have, that we currently have. And to look at that as a whole and say, okay, um, looking forward, what would we as a town like to have happen with this very valuable piece of property? And uh, it's uh, uh, the, the, uh, the debate is certainly gonna be, uh, as I say, you've got two valuable resources. You've got uh, excellent agricultural land and you've got excellent sand and gravel. And those are both becoming more and more rare commodities. So we felt as a select board that it is a unique opportunity for a town to be able to purchase an important piece of property, take the time to come up with a plan, decide what we want to do with it, including we could turn around and we could sell it. You know, we don't, we, we don't have to, but if we don't own it, we're not going to have anything to say about it. Well, I don't, uh, I've not read anywhere where the actual price was stated for the purchase. I don't, I didn't see that anywhere. Maybe that's, I missed it. Uh, nope, nope. In the, uh, in the article, I think, and we knew we'd need a, a little bit of money to do some planning with it. Um, Howard, I think it was 250 uh, okay. and we're looking for 275 to deal with doing borings and everything that you need to do to deal with the property to, to make sure that it does make sense to buy it. Has that parcel been uh, appraised at that price or are we paying too much for it? Um, looking at what property is going for, I, I haven't, um, that is a reasonable <laughs> price for a piece of property like that. It, okay. That's a, that's a, that's a high-end piece of property. I mean, I think some de some developers would look at that and go, "Boy, you could put a lot of houses on that," you know. And if you look at the conservation map all around it, and the and the Clarks went to a lot of effort to conserve a lot of their property around it. So, so it's a uh, it, it's a prime piece of Hyde Park property. And again, we just thought it, it would it would it's an not an opportunity that doesn't come along very often to a community to 
invest a little money. And as I say, worst comes to worst, we can always turn around and sell it. And as uh, right. several people have said, you know, they're, they're not making property anymore. So it's right. appraisal is not going to go down. So why, as Howard, Howard is very acute, astute as a businessman, why is he selling this? Do we know? Um, he's, he's, uh, he's in his mid eighties and know he's, that. he's, uh, he's, he's selling all sorts of things. He's okay. just sort of going, well, and I, I expect his family may have said, about the you know, yes. yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, and, and he does, okay. he says he's, he's, he's always yeah. been very generous and good with the town, but I think a lot of his family has gone, uh, you know, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all these things you've brought over the years, dad. Yeah. <laughs> Why, well, you know. All right. All right. Well, thank you. Sure. <laughs> I'll let you sure. finish your no. meeting. <laughs> no, no, no. We're, we're close, but it's always, it's a, it's an interesting opportunity and, and people are, uh, again, and, and I, I, for me, the good thing is that nobody can do anything for a while. So we have plenty of time to put together a group. And, and I think if you put together a, a diverse group of Hyde Park residents, we'll probably come up with a variety of fascinating things that we can do when you look at if we own that then all the property we own up there we can probably come up with some pretty interesting forward-thinking plans about what we can do that would be good for the community great thank you sure okay we got we good anybody else I just gotta say, I'm gonna I'm gonna be glad when next year rolls around and we can go back to a real town meeting again. <laughs> you know, I miss that. I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be glad to go back to that. Yeah, I agree. Roley, got anything? Matt, anybody? We're all set. I don't have nothing. Everything was done well. Okay, so I guess we can have a. Uh, a um, motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, Anybody opposed? Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, good night. If you if you haven't already voted, get out there and do it. <laughs>